Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Secretary Vilsack, for joining us here today. It's great to have you with us again, and, and you do bring a unique uh, perspective to this position. Not only have you had the opportunity to serve as our Agriculture Secretary before, but of course, more importantly, uh, for Senator Grassley and I, you bring a unique perspective uh, being from Iowa. And it is my hope that if you are cons confirmed to the position again, that you will stand firm for our farmers and ranchers in Iowa as you work to implement the new policies of this new administration. So as you know, Iowa, and you know this intimately, but uh, Iowa is a top producer of our biofuels, both ethanol and biodiesel. A new report released just last week found that greenhouse gas emissions from corn ethanol are 46% lower than gasoline. The executive order, however, uh, last week establishes a policy to change the federal vehicle fleet over to electric vehicles. And in light of this announcement, will you be directing the USDA to purchase Tesla trucks or that run on electricity, or will you be supporting our farmers in purchasing Ford F-150s that run on E85? Senator, I, think, uh, I don't think it's an either or circumstance. I think there's an opportunity to advance both. I mean, the reality is we're gonna need biofuels uh, in the biofuel industry for the foreseeable future. And you mentioned the, the study that came out. I think it's a Harvard-based study uh, that I think underscores the fact that as we educate people about the environmental benefits of biofuels, uh, we will see, I, I think, uh, the opportunity to expand the utilization of biofuels. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, the importance of, of marine and, and aviation fuel. It's not just transportation, uh, truck cars and trucks. It's also <laughs> jets uh, and, uh, and uh, ships that will use this fuel. So I think we look for expanded opportunities in a variety of different ways at the same time, I think we recognize that uh, there, there will be more and more electric vehicles uh, that will be utilized in, in the country. Uh, and we also recognize that that's going to require uh, energy. Where does that energy come from? Well, I think there's opportunities within rural America to promote rural renewable energy, uh, which can also be beneficial to uh, the farmers and ranchers and producers that we care about. And, and I certainly hope that you continue to echo that sentiment very loudly and clearly with the administration, um, because my concern is this, that uh, you know, as much as my Democratic colleagues would like to talk about Donald Trump and biofuels you know, all day long, but when President Obama, um, your old boss, came to Iowa, he made a lot of really significant promises uh, to these farmers and those in the biofuel industry and I would argue that the reality is he simply wasn't a champion. Um, we didn't see E15 a year round under his administration. He wasn't that champion. Um, he put out the WOTUS rule too, which was an attack on agriculture. Uh, so let's, let's think ahead. 2022 is coming up. Um, it is a significant milestone for the RFS. Uh, the renewable fuel standard will need to be reauthorized. And if confirmed, which I anticipate you will be confirmed, you will be sitting in the Oval Office with President Biden in 2022. Just imagine yourself there and you are there discussing the opportunity for the RFS, but you also have an electric vehicle advocate uh, sitting across the table. What will you do in your capacity to make sure we get this done, get the renewal of the RFS done, um, when we are facing near unanimous support of Democrats when it comes to electric vehicles? What, what is the way you will handle this as Secretary of Agriculture? Well, I'd probably say to, to President Biden, I'd probably remind him that I have a 2006 Ford Focus uh, that I still own. So I voted for what, 14, 15 years, six, 17 years? No, uh, 15 years. Uh, I, I would remind him that there are so many, many Americans like me and my wife who have cars that are six, seven, eight, 10, 12 years old. 
Uh, and the reality is that we're going to need both. We're going to need a, a biofuel industry that promotes, as you pointed out, uh, the, the, uh, the greenhouse gas emission savings over gasoline. Uh, we're going to promote uh, biofuels because of the octane uh, capacity. So if we're really interested in expanding the mileage uh, uh, over time, uh, one way to do that is by having uh, biofuels, higher blend biofuels that, that will expand mileage uh, with new engines. Uh, and the reality is that uh, General Motors and Ford and all of those other uh, car companies, they're not going to stop producing uh, uh, combustion uh, uh, engines, uh, cars with combustion, you know, combustion engines. They're not going to stop that process. So we need an alternative fuel source uh, in addition to add to complement uh, our efforts on, on the electric. I don't see why we can't have both and, uh, over a long period of time. We're going to need both. And while we're while we're developing and, and, and ensuring that the infrastructure is in place, something the Obama administration did invest in, uh, additional infrastructure to increase the opportunities for E15 to be uh, utilized in several thousand gas stations around the country. Uh, while we're doing that, we also need to look for ways in which we can incorporate biofuels, as I said before, in other forms of transportation. And I think there are tremendous opportunities in, in, in aviation and marine fuel as well. So I think there's, there's a future for this industry. I think that there are jobs connected to this industry. There's uh, stability of farm income connected to this industry. I don't think I'm going to have to be uh, too persuasive in that Oval Office uh, to have the president who, who committed to the RFS during the course of the campaign to follow through on that commitment. And thank you, uh, Secretary. I do hope you stand strong. I have a question that I will submit um, for the record, but it is about the 30 by 30 climate proposal. It was a climate executive order. Um, it was a proposal to conserve 30% of US land by 2030. And I know that that is also very concerning to our farmers to have a proposal that would um, limit the opportunity to them to farm uh, with widespread retirement of farmland. So I will submit that for the record and look forward to your response. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.